There is truth and there is error. There is good and there is evil. There is a Christ and there is a devil. You see, we live in a very interesting world where right sometimes seems wrong and, and wrong is told that it is right. But ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where there is truth in the world of opinions. And the greatest truth that ever exists is the fact that you and I can resist the devil. Listen to 1 Peter 5, 6 and 8. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There's no doubt that the devil wants us to fail, but you and I can resist the devil, live for Christ, and be with him for an eternity. Join me as we study today on how we can resist the devil. Within the pages of God's inspired word, we learn the truth, which shows us the way that will lead us to heaven. The Church of Christ at East Hill invites you to study with us for the next 30 minutes a portion of the Word of God. Listen now to these encouraging words in song and then have your Bibles ready for the lesson for today. Good morning and thank you so much for tuning in to Walking with the Word. I'm Jonathan Burns, the minister of the East Hill Church of Christ, and it's a privilege to be with you on this program today as we study the scriptures together. I want you to do me a favor today. I want you to hold me accountable. 
I want you as we go through our program to get out your Bible and to look up these verses and to see what they say and to look and see if I'm telling you the truth. Because ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter what Jonathan Burns says. It does not matter what the modern theologians of today say. It matters what God's Word has to say. And as we study about the roar of the devil that's heard throughout the world, let us look to God's Word so that we can understand everything that we need to know. We're going to be looking at the devil today and seeing that there is truth in a world full of opinions. And notice that we can be a people who resist the devil. You see, the devil wants us to fail. He wants us to be helpless. He wants us to be hopeless. But the truth is, God has given us help. God has given us hope. And God has given us a way to resist the devil. There are three things that I want us to do in today's program. I want us to notice that we should never give him place in our lives. I want us to see that your vision is needed to see what he's doing. And I want us to see that we can learn about the ways so that we can be prepared with what he's doing and what we need to be doing in this life. Let's start today by looking at the fact that we should never be willing to give the devil any place. To do this, I want you to go with me to James chapter 4. And let's notice in James chapter 4 verse 7 and we'll reference verse 10 as we begin to study never give him place. Here's verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There are two things as a priority that are happening in James 4, 7. Number one, we must submit ourselves to God. It is God who we look to. It is God who we listen to. It is God who we pray to. Does it not make sense to you that it is God of whom we submit our lives to? It is God who matters. It is God who has done all and created all. It is God who should be a priority in our lives. Number one, we submit our lives to God. Number two, we resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see, one of the greatest things that we need to recognize in this life is we must give God the place in our lives. So oftentimes we give the devil the place. Now we don't use that in our everyday words. We don't use that in our handwritten language. But ladies and gentlemen, it's very true that you and I may be putting the devil first before God. We may be submitting to devil and we may be resisting God. But the truth is we can test this in our lives. We can see what we need to do as we look at God's Word. As you think about James 4, 7, I want you to also notice James 4, 10. Humble yourselves therefore in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Do you not see the great emphasis that's happening in James 4, especially verse 7 and verse 10. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Do you not see the reality of this? It is God who should be at the center of our lives. It is God who should be a great stronghold as we live in this life of temptation and sorrow. As we think about the very idea of never giving the devil place, I want to give you five ways to never give him place in your life. Here's number one. The first thing you and I can do to keep the devil out of our lives is to study the Bible. I know that may sound very simple to so many, and it may sound simple to you, but the greatest resource that God has given us in this life is the Bible. It tells us about the creation of man, how man came to be, and the purpose of man. It tells us of the history of all of mankind and what it took to get us to this place. We see the rise and fall of nations inside of the Bible, and we see God who was always there. We see Jesus inside of the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And we see Jesus who was brought about through the Old Testament. And we see Jesus who was going to be the sacrifice for sins. And we need to know that there is a way to get out of the problem of sin. It's through Jesus Christ. And as we study the Bible, we recognize that there is a place for Christians to belong. It's the church. Acts 2.47 says that we're added to the church by God. God has created a place and Jesus is over the church so that we can have somewhere to be. We need to study the Bible 
to know more about what God expects in this life. But not only that, we need to study the Bible to see what God expects of the life to come. As you read this Bible, you will recognize that man was born and man dies. There's man who lives in goodness and there's man who lives in wickedness. And we need to recognize that our lives have a direct relation to eternity. Will you be in heaven that was prepared for God's people? Or will you be in hell, a place that was prepared for the devil and his angels? One of the ways to never give him place is to study the Bible. The second way to never give the devil place in your life is to attend church services. I believe this is a very strong indicator of the way we study the Bible. If we are Bible students, we will recognize that God's place for mankind upon the face of the earth is inside the church. To be inside the church, we must be inside of Christ, but the church is a family. It's a collective group of God's people. And there's something that the church does as a variety of times throughout the week. Of course, there's always worship that takes place on Sundays and Bible studies that takes place on different days. But there's something that will be true in your life if you will attend regularly church services. You will find yourself at ease when you study the Bible at home. You will find things that you've heard about. You will find things that you've studied in church services and it helps you throughout your life. But not only that, you will find yourself having something to make a priority, to be with God's people, to be with God. Oh, a way to never give the devil the place in your life and in mine is to attend the church services. Number three in five ways to never give him place is spend time with your family in family Bible time. Does your family read the Bible together? Does your family pray together? Do you have a Bible in your home? You see, a way to never give the devil any place is to let the Bible be the center of your life. That's why I've chose this to be the third point for us to look at in five ways to never give him place. If the Bible is not in your home, then the Bible is probably not in your life. Here's what I mean by that. If it's not the central figure in everything that we do, then there's an issue. I'm not talking about here people who have children. I'm talking about people who live. Maybe you're single. Maybe you were once married, but now you live alone. Do you spend time in the Bible together? Maybe it's just you as a husband and wife. Do you spend time together in the Bible and do you pray together? Maybe you have children. Do you spend time with your children in the Bible and inside of prayer? Maybe you have grandchildren. When they come over, what's the central thing inside of your life? You see, I hope the Bible becomes the central theme for your life and you have family Bible time. It's a great way to never give him place and to never give him time. In number four, in five ways to never give him place, you need to know your friends. There's something that's true. We learned this as we grew up. We learned this as children and we've seen it in our lives. You've got to know your friends. You have to know those that are around you because those that you surround yourself with, they will become the greatest influences in your life. That's one of the reasons, by the way, point number two was attend church services. If you will surround yourselves with godly people, with God's people, you will find yourself in a greater place in life. Because after all, aren't God's people supposed to be the best people on the face of the earth? You've got to know who you are around. The truth is, those that are around us, they will influence us in this life in a way that we may have never understood. And it's a great way to never give Him place. In the five ways to never give Him place, the fifth way is to spend time in prayer. Probably one of the easiest things that you and I can do throughout the day is pray. It simply takes your time. And you and I, if we're honest with our lives, have plenty of time. You find yourself sitting and waiting here or there. You sign, find yourself with time at a variety of places in your life. Let me illustrate some things to you where you have time. When you wake up in the morning, can you give some time to prayer? When you go to bed at night, can you give some time to prayer? When you eat your meals, can you give some time to prayer? 
You see, in those two short areas, we have found five different times of which we have to spend time in prayer. And you see, the reality is, if we'll spend time in prayer, we'll never give the devil place. Because the truth is, if we will fill our lives with things that have to do with God, we will never give the devil any place. Because we can submit ourselves to God, we can fill our lives with God, and we'll resist the devil, and he will flee from us. But what we've got to do is we've got to be willing to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and let Him lift us up. We need to understand that the most important thing in this life should be God and should be our relationship to Him. And we should never give the devil place inside of this life. In the second way today, number one, we never give Him place. But number two, your vision is needed. Your vision is needed. We're going to go to 1 Peter 5 and look at verse 8 and then look as a reference verse 7 and verse 11. Listen to 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I know that you and I are always watching. We live in an interesting world. We are always being watched and now in the society we live in, we have an extra eye open, proverbially we may say. We're always watching out for danger. We're always watching out for our loved ones. But let me tell you, your vision is needed in watching out for the devil. You look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and you recognize that we've got to be prepared in this life because there is one who is coming to devour us. The word devour here means to destroy to cause to be no more. That's what the devil wants. But listen to what God wants, 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Have you ever felt alone? Have you ever felt like no one's ever experienced the things you're dealing with in life? Have you ever felt like no one understands what's going on in your life? God does. And God is waiting for us to cast our care upon Him, to cast our troubles upon Him, to bring Him through prayer the problems of this life. There's something that's true, and it will always be true, and it has always been true of mankind. Mankind deals with problems. But there is Jesus who cares for us and is concerned about us. So you think about 1 Peter 5, 8, how we must be watching because the devil is there to devour us. We think about verse 7, because Jesus is here and he cares for us. And we think about verse 11, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And the text reads, Amen, or let it be so. We need to recognize that God will always be there, that God will always be here, and that as long as man is on the face of the earth, God will always be concerned about man. By the way, has God not done some amazing things for man? Did God not create man? Oh, what an amazing thing that was. Did God not save man? Oh, what a task it was to save man. And has God not prepared for man to live in eternity with him? You see, it's God who is always going to be there, and our vision is needed. I believe there are three areas of which our vision is needed inside of this life. We need to, number one, know ourselves. Number two, know your spouse. And number three, we need to know our children as we live in this life. Let's illustrate those three things to us and help us understand how our vision is needed. Number one, you need to know yourself. You need to know your weaknesses. That's not something that we're comfortable with. But if you're going to know yourself, you need to know your weaknesses. And as much as you need to know your weaknesses, you need to know your strengths. I know you know what you're good at just as much as I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm bad at. I know you know what tempts you the most just as much as I know what tempts me the most. I know you know what you're good at in your spiritual life just as much as you know what you struggle with in your spiritual life. And the truth is, we need to know ourselves. Before we can go any further, before we can ever open up our eyes, we need to know who we are. 
And really what we're saying today is we need to know who we belong to. Do you belong to Christ or do you belong to the devil? It's only one of the two. And the first way to open your eyes is to know who you are. In the second place, and this may not be something of which you can do because you may not be in this category today, you need to know your spouse. For those that are married, you need to know who you're married to. You need to know their strengths and you need to know their weaknesses. You need to know how you can help them and you need to know how they can help you. And that's a great way to open your eyes because the reality is the devil is there and he wants to devour you. He wants to destroy you just as much as he wants your spouse to be destroyed with you. And you need to know your spouse. You need to know how you can help them. One of the greatest things a husband can do for his wife is to dwell with her according to knowledge and to dwell with her with the issues that exist in this life and to know who she is. And one of the greatest things that a wife can do for her, her husband is to know how she can help him, to encourage him, and to be there for him. You see, one of the greatest ways to open your eyes outside of knowing yourself is knowing the most important person on this physical earth in relationship to you, and that's your spouse. And number three, in three ways to open your eyes, you need to know your children. I have been very blessed to have two children, and they are the greatest things that have ever happened to me inside of my life. But there's something that I know about children, because I know it of myself, and you know it of yourself, is eventually they will need the Lord. Children are not born into sin. Children aren't born with sin. And children, as they are born, are not committing sin. But there comes a day when they will choose to walk away from the ways of the Lord. And you need to know your children. I've already, in the short time my children have been alive, have been able to determine that my children, why they're just like my wife and I. My oldest son, he is just like my wife. My youngest son, he is just like me. And boy, he's in for it. But that tells me something. We know how to help our children because we know how to help ourselves. We know how to help each other as husbands and wives and we know what's best for each other. And here's the best thing. The best thing we can do for one another is get each other to heaven. Oh, 1 Peter 5, 8 tells us about the devil. And verse 7 tells us about Jesus who cares for us. And verse 11 tells us about the fact that He's always going to be there. But ladies and gentlemen, we need to recognize that we need to open our eyes and we need to see the problems that exist in this life and be prepared for them. In the third place today, let's learn about His ways. To do that, I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And I want you to notice verse 11 and then we'll reference verse 17. Here's 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. One of the greatest things that God has done for man is given us his word. I hope that today you have opened up your Bible. And I hope that you've looked at the passages that we've referenced and see them there. And I hope you've asked this question, is he telling me the truth? One of the greatest ways that the devil uses to destroy us is to destroy God's Word. Do you remember in the beginning in the book of Genesis, God creates all things, God creates man, God institutes the very first marriage, the family, and what was it that the devil said? Thou shalt not surely die. The devil only used one word to try to change God's Word. And boy, it has had a lasting impact on the face of mankind. The very first couple, they lived in sin. And there's something that's always true about that. If it were not Adam and Eve, it would have been you and me. It would have been us as our couple. Someone would have brought sin into this world. We so oftentimes look at Adam and Eve and ask this question, how could they? But we need to be asking it of ourselves, how could we? Because have you sinned in this life? Has your spouse sinned in this life? Do you know people who have lived in sin in this life? You see, the devil used one word, Thou shalt not surely die. But see, we need to be prepared in this life. We need to make sure that Satan does not get an advantage 
over us. That means we need to make sure He does not win. You see, God has given us the manual on life. It's His Word. He tells us everything we need to know. But ladies and gentlemen, are we willing to hear Him? The truth is, God says we're not ignorant of the devices of Satan. And we need to be a people who are prepared inside of God's Word. That's why we reference 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we Christ. The greatest thing anyone can do for someone else is to spend time with them in God's Word and to make sure they do not corrupt the Word of God. That's why I gave you that challenge today to look at the passages that we're seeing and to let God's Word speak not as Jonathan speaks but as the Word of God speaks. You know as we've been going through our program we've been looking at ways that we can put the devil out of our lives. Can I give you the greatest way that we can put him out of our lives and the greatest way that we can learn about the devil's way? You need to open the Bible. I need to open the Bible as a country, as a nation, as a people, as a world. We need to open the Bible and let the Bible speak and see what God has said so that we can know about the devil and his tactics and so that we can know about what God has done for all of us to be with him. You see, we are not a people who have the opportunity or have the responsibility or have the option to corrupt the word of God. God's Word is right. God's Word is true. And let us never be like that tempter who only added one word to change everything for man, mankind, and the future generations of this world. But let us be a people who understand that we can open up the Bible. We can learn about the ways of the devil. And we can be prepared in this life to stand against him because we know his ways. It's up to you and I to resist the devil. And may we never give him place in this life. May our vision be ready so that we understand him and may we learn about his ways so that we can be a people who resist the devil. The truth is, we live in a world full of opinions, but we can resist the devil. And what a pleasure it is to know that God has prepared us for this life and God has made it possible for us to know about eternity. Thank you for joining me today on today's program and studying with me a portion of God's Word. And may you be back with us next week at the same time. Thank you for joining us today for our study. If you have questions or comments, feel free to contact us at Post Office Box 329, Pulaski, Tennessee, 38478, or call 363 363- 2777. We hope you will be with us again next Sunday at this same time. And we would be honored to have you in Bible classes at the East Hill Church beginning this morning at 9.30. Worship will follow at 10.30. We hope to see you then.